What has long struck me about the Lauragais is that this is a land where the past is a part of everyday life. Here you can slip history over your head in the shape of a pastel dyed garment like the one I'm wearing, or listen to the old folk speaking Occitan, the ancient language of the troubadours. Better still, why not drink it down with a glass of the world's oldest sparkling wine, Blanquette de Limoux? You will also stumble across the past during many a country stroll. In Roman times, a palatial villa stood at the centre of an agricultural community, up there in the fields beyond the sunflowers, and today the ploughman still turns up pieces of mosaic. Up there on the ridge, the Romans built something else. Probably a watchtower, maybe a small temple to Jupiter, possibly both. Whatever it was, the ruins were absorbed into the walls of the Chateau de Manger a thousand years ago. What fascinates me most, though, are the people who have shaped this land, the living and the dead. Families who have lived in the same home or village for hundreds of years. Take the current owner of this chateau, for example. He has traced his local ancestors back to 1565, and he is undoubtedly the best person to explain why, eight centuries ago, a former owner decided to massacre 6,000 crusader pilgrims right here. Back then, the Lord de Manger was a Qatar, and the Catholic Bishop of Toulouse accused the heretics of killing, crippling, mutilating, and disemboweling so many crusaders that the fields of Manger were covered in blood. The dead lie beneath a burial mound down there in the village at the bottom of the hill. So follow me through the pages of my book, and with the help of people and places like these, I'll take you on a trip through time in a land that is endearingly modest about its illustrious past. Mm.